Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are we are prepared. We are Super ready. Prepared. We are we are one hundred percent not checking out the Twitch merch on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> Whatever, yeah, they may be fifty percent off, uh, and actually no spawn by the way. Uh, it's because I'm wearing one of the tops, so so we, we may be we may have been discussing our shopping list rather than getting ready to speak to you guys. But now, now you don't even know. But I said it. God damn it! It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. We're all right. It is Tuesday, seventeenth of December, twenty nineteen, uh, episode fifty one, which I only remember that because it was fifty yesterday. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Was. Next week I'll be like episode <laughs> <laughs> episode something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, my name is Grim Day, and I'm joined by Bibi. Good morning, guys. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, it's almost Christmas. It's almost Christmas. It's one week until Christmas Eve. Aye. Yeah. Aye. So, uh, have you done all your Christmas shopping now? No. <laughs> Any? No. I, I, actually, I've, I've done, I'm doing all right. I've got, I've got uh, quite a bunch of stuff. I just need to, like, uh, I kind of, me and Danielle, I've got kind of the same approach. We kind of, like, buy and stock up mm -hmm. so i started months ago uh not that i'm like super mega planned yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. i just i just start squirreling stuff away until it comes to winter uh but danielle has her birthday like start of january so it's christmas and then her birthday whereas i have my birthday start of december and then it's christmas so she kind of buys it and then divvies it up and i do the same thing we are both in exactly the same boat because obviously your birthday is on the third yours is on the ninth yeah and samantha's is on the 7th of january danielle's on the Fourth. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's weird, isn't it? Uh, so like this payday is me going to well, it's me getting the the final bits of the Christmas presents, then going to Dublin, and then her birthday all in one Did month. Did not know you were going to Dublin. Yeah. What the hell? Why? New Year's. Honestly, fastest growing city in London, that you know, in Europe, that you know, mm -hmm. population just keeps on doubling. <sighs> See, I've heard that one. That's that's my grand. That's one of my granddad's. That straight down the line, but. You know, I'll give you that. I'll give you that one on podcast. I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it was Danielle who told me that one. Uh, I think she like. Oh, was it Danielle? So no, someone, someone had been to Dublin. Maybe it was Danielle. I mean, if she's in the chat, she'll be able to say if she's not. Then well, she won. All right. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, someone and it was like a, a tour guide or someone or a, a hotel person or someone was like like doing the general mm. Irish like banter kind of thing. It's like. I'm, sure not, I'm not going to offend anyone by doing an Irish accent. I offend people by doing my own accent. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but yes, this is the scoop, the ice cream scoop. Uh, we bring you the scoop of all the news from the games industry and beyond each and every weekday, 10 a.m.-ish UK time. Uh, we then let you guys talk through that with us live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. We then turn that into an audio podcast, not an audio, a video podcast, should I say, uh, about an hour or so after the show finishes. We upload that to YouTube so that each and every person that doesn't get to sit here in the morning can watch on demand wherever and whenever they want. But the thing is, the guys that watch the video afterwards, they don't get to interact with us. So if you are live watching on Twitch right now, please stay low. Feel free. Mm -hmm. Ch chat or talk in the chat. It's kind of not in Bibby's ear. No, it's over there in the bottom corner down there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, please feel free to get involved. You are the only people that get a chance to do that. Not only for the people on YouTube, but we also turn this show into a, an audio podcast on four different audio services. Do you know what well, they are, Bibby? I, I most certainly do, mate, but um, I want you to tell the people iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play, pa 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 Ooh, That's a good crisp. one. Crisp. That was nice a good connection. one. Uh, so, yes, if you are in the chat, please, please feel free to say hello. I can see that we have number one pirate in the chat. People are going to Dublin. <gasps> Absolutely, mate. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's the first time that we're going to be going away for New Year ever. Usually we just end up either having a house party out of mine or going to somebody else's house for a house party. So, actually going out on New Year's is going to be great. Oh, you, oh so you're going to... Doubling for New Year. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Are, you, are you there over Christmas as well, or just? No. So we go on. I don't know if it's New Year's Eve or the New Year's Eve Eve, <laughs> but we come back on the. <laughs> My name's not Eve. <laughs> I think we come back on New Year's Day, um, so we're there for a good three days. Um, but we there's a bar that we went to last time because we've been three times. I think this will be the fourth time we're going. There's a bar that we went to last time called Buskers, and it is two floors. The top floor has is like a acoustic music venue, and the bottom floor, massive sports bar, pool tables, ping pong, <laughs> uh, old arcade machines, big massive sports screens all over the gaff, and it's about four euro a Guinness, so that's me. Shibby! That's me, so we got the tickets for that, and we're all good. Daniel Day. I know that name from somewhere. She says, hello, in the chat. Good morning, good morning. What are you doing this, New Year's? Uh... Potentially Manchester, Shire, 
shitty shenta <laughs> shitty <Ooh>. shenta <laughs> uh, for the uh, fireworks that's what we've done for the last two years yeah. although it's usually Albert Square um, like in Town Hall whereas they moved mm-hmm. it more to the cathedral so yeah. we'll the, town hall, the town hall's not in use at the moment is it for like another four years yeah they're like rebuilding it or whatever yeah. like this scaffolding and Mad. stuff all around it all around it but anyway that's enough of the uh, the local speak from Manchester Shishtershire uh, we have a bunch of stories for you today and because we are massive nerds <laughs> and uh, we like Star Wars we thought do you know what we'll start off with a headline Star Wars uh, story as we did yesterday and, and we're going to do tomorrow as well and the day after and what, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. whatever gives us clicks we're going to keep on doing <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars comes to Stadia with Fortnite and <laughs> Apple iPhones <laughs> Just all the keywords. <laughs> I mean, everyone in the chat is a bot. But, but apart from that, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so, yes, yeah, so we'll jump into our first bit of news. Dead one. That's already open. Boom. Oh, smashed it. Smashed it. Let's move us down here. Down there. Danielle Day, thank you very much for the two month resub. Bam, bam, Absolute bam. ledge. Cheers, love. Window ledge. <laughs> Window ledge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to react to that, so I'm just going to move along. <laughs> so this is written by Tom Phillips for Yuri Gamer. Um, we, we touched on this yesterday, and uh, Bibby showed a video kind of uh, showing this. I've got another one in there. Yeah, yeah. the <laughs> you know what, I don't do things by ass, mate. When I, when I see something funny, I'm sharing it with you. Like, Don't worry about that. So as Fortnite gets lightsabers, players are abandoning weapons for one-on-one duels, more powerful than you can possibly imagine. So this weekend's live Star Wars event added lightsabers to Fortnite, and now... Now fans are properly having fun with them. The addition of Star Wars' elegant Jedi weapon al- uh, allows for some high intensity duels. When holding one, you can attack and parry, block weapon fire, and do a kind of ninja roll. Not not the ninja like from Fortnite fame. General ninjas. Uh, in fact, some fans have now gone full Jedi and are only using lightsabers. In this clip posted to uh, Reddit slash Fortnite BR uh, by Fortnite fan Suckboy. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> Did not know that was the name I was going to read in two words before. <laughs> the final two players out of 100 drop all of their weaponry and go head to head in the duel to the death for the prized victory royale. Suckboy ended up winning the con- uh, contest, scoring his first victory royale of the Are season. Are you ready for this? Go on then, let's do let's it. Let's go, let's go. So let's whip this one back. So this guy's accepting the duel, he's just putting all, these, uh, all of them on the floor. This guy's thinking, oh shit. Okay, they're both going for it. They're dropping all the weapons. It's going to be a one on one. (laughs) (laughs) This is badass. This is absolute quality. Oh, there we go. Behind his head as well. (laughs) Wow. He does a nice little kneel as well. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, that's just absolutely amazing. You said something about this happening in PUBG. Pan fights. Yeah, pan fights, yeah. Oh, you get that. You get down to the final circle and you occasionally see someone like just kind of like. Mm. Up and down with a pan in their hand, and then everyone drops all the loot, all their armor, and everything. So can you see them all drop their armor and loot? Because like, yeah. obviously, the, with the guns glowing like this, you can actively see from pretty far away that they're willing to go one v one with this with a lightsaber, which I think is just cool as shit, really. Um, that does look sick, though. That sh- that sort of like lightsaber battle in an online sort of BR setup. Fucking Battlefront 2, sort your shit out. Get, get, get <laughs> that in the game. God, I mean, so imagine cool. Fortnite being the best Star Wars online player. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Uh, but yeah, PUBG, you get it, and you just get, like, if you drops like, whatever, you just see the item on the floor. It doesn't have the big glow, but yeah. usually when you get to a pan fight circle, it's usually a small circle anyway, so you can see them dropping yeah. stuff. Uh, and then it's like, it gets, it's got to the point where it's all ceremonial now, though. People mm. will drop all this shit and they'll get ready. One person will have a stun grenade, lob it up in the air, and it'll go, <laughs> and then they go, ah! <laughs> It's just adding a new dimension to it though. This is like this is super cool. Like the the guy, the I'll just uh, replay it again. What what's his name? Uh, <laughs> something boy. <laughs> uh, so you can see this guy over here. I'm just gonna pause it. So he drops his stuff. This guy's a bit unsure about what's gonna happen because he drops down to the floor. He crouches. He's like, oh, do I take the shot? <laughs> like he's not sure yet. He's blocking. He doesn't know. I wonder if you block it, parries the bullets. I, I would expect it does. Um, just because that's what happens in Star Wars games, yeah. but then again, it's not Star Wars games, so I don't yeah. know. So as he's cr- as he's crouching, he's like, yeah, he wants it. He's smelling it. He's dropping his gear. Boom, 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 and then it comes. Oh, the one v one. It's so cool. I love I love when you get to that point when you've got that moment of two people knowing that they're gonna do something. Look yeah. at that round back of his head. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> 
G to the G. Even though your name is Suck Boy. Yeah. GG. Yeah, it does pirate, pirate the bullets. Uh, pirate said, nice one, mate. It pirates the bullets? It pirates the bullets. <laughs> but anyway, back to the article. Unlike other mythic quality weapons in the past, looking at you, Infinity Bleed, the lightsaber is available to multiplayer, uh, multiple players across all modes. There are even oh. different varieties. So you can play with Ray's Blue Blade, Luke's Green, Mace Windows Purple, or Kylo Ren's Red. It's actually uh, Luke's Blue Blade, I think you'll find. Uh, Ray just has it now. Uh, anyway, the lightsabers will be in the game for another week as Fortnite hosts a set of Star Wars challenges with a smattering of freebies to unlock. Scroll down for more videos, including a lightsaber-wielding duelist who goes on to take down a whole team of four. <laughs> Man, that's what I'm watching now. Watch this. It is sick. Oh. Let's see if we can zoom in. Do you not press the full screen button on it, or is there not? Yeah, it's, it's already on full screen. You just have to zoom in the article. No, I meant on the actual video player. Oh, right. Yeah, I could, <laughs> I could do that. Yeah, could do that. So, is that... Right, so, right. I, think this is the, I think this is them starting. So can they not hit you at all once you've got the whole thing, even if they're like behind you kind of thing? I imagine so, yeah, because it's only going to block from the front, isn't it? Like that guy got hit in the back of the head. Oh, there you go, he's down. Oh, is, is he going to show... It's going gonna, it's gonna to go from her perspective now, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. He's in the blood. <laughs> Well, she's absolutely done them all. <laughs> Just took out a whole. So that's a squad wipe for the lightsaber. <laughs> Naruto run. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, Who thought we'd be celebrating this in uh, 2000 and nearly 20? Do you know what? I keep saying it every time I'm on the stream. It's like, do you know what? I'm gonna download that. Do you know what? I'm gonna play that. Do you know what? But I've got so much like stuff that I'm watching, like American Horror Stories, and was watching Brooklyn Nine Nine, and and st like playing three bits that I keep thinking, oh, do you know what? I've just not got the time. But this looks really good, and I, I, I know full well it's not going to be what I want because we're watching these hand-picked moments where you're seeing people having lightsaber fights. But I know that I'm going to pick up Fortnite, and I'm going to get some like two-year veteran kind of thingy that yeah. builds uh, a two-up, two-down, a townhouse, a small swimming pool, uh, a shopping mall, and whatever around it. M meanwhile, I'm there going... <laughs> <laughs> well, so. funnily enough, we're actually having a Fortnite party upstairs on dinner today. Are we really? Four-man teams. Uh, bags is fourth. Well, I've got me... Uh, I brought my Switch in so someone can use the console on my desk. It's already downloaded and that, so we're all ready to go. Me, me... Me. <laughs> okay, that genuinely is quite exciting, though. To be fair, to see, I've all, I've wanted. Here we go. Look at this. Like, this is sick. I've wanted lightsaber uh, battles to be something forever, uh, but you only get it in single-player games, really. I mean, I know you can get lightsabers in Star Wars Battlefront, but only when you're uh, like one of the heroes. Um, and then you only get them for a limited time, and and it's just you don't get to fully experience like. Bam! That's so cool, isn't it? It is so cool. That jump, that jump is insane. It's so good how they managed to get the kind of animations like this using the. Uh, is it? It's the Unreal Engine, isn't it, that they use for this? Oh. Uh, yeah, it is. Is it? Yes, I think it is. Is that the one that Epic owns? I think uh, so. Yeah, because they what? take an Unreal tournament. Unreal Engine Four. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, nice. that, that'll make a cool as shit wallpaper that yeah is that is that what someone's taking like just within game uh, no I think that might be uh, I, I'm not sure it, it seems too polished yeah, to be yeah. in game screenshot um, it's like when the predator's taking off his armour what against at <laughs> <laughs> oh it's cool it's harp vader it's a harp, there's not even a fish. It's carp. Carp Vader. Carp God Vader. damn. Failed. Uh, anyway, moving on uh, from one bit of Star Wars news. Let's stick with the Star Wars theme. We're jumping through the news articles on our end as Bibby keeps it all on screen. Oh, no. Don't spoil us. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. No one's seen that. Nobody saw that. It's fine. Absolutely not. Uh, so, uh, do you know what? You've never seen this before, I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is written by Emily Geary for VG247. She says, Star Wars Battlefront 2 celebrates the Rise of Skywalker film with new in-game content. Uh, let's bring you guys in close. Hi, good morning. This is my uh, Twitch. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, do you know what? We should get links and stuff put in. in not 
that we're getting anything now because people just go to Amazon type in Twitch shit, whatever. And we don't get any kickbacks, mate. We should, we should but we didn't. Advertising. Anyway, um, so you may have heard me speak about Star Wars Battlefront to as recent as yesterday, mm -hmm. saying how it's just not, yep. it's not my kind of game. It's, it, I loved Star Wars Battlefront and so much so that I bought the deluxe edition Stormtrooper Mega Magic Wonder Bastard edition, whatever <laughs> it was called. Um, and and it just wasn't what I wanted. It was pants. Like the the balancing of the game was so so bad, even a month into it, that people were running around using sniper rifles as like blaster cannons yeah. kind of thing in, and the, the the class setup that they gone to meant that you couldn't fully customize your setup. Uh, and I liked the idea of that at first because I was thinking, oh, class setup, Battlefront by company, yes, boy. Mm. But but you just nobody worked teamsmanship. Everyone just kind of like buggered off, and it, so I gave up on it like super quick. However, let's jump back to this now. Uh, Oh, oh, I'm going oh. to do what we did the other day. I'm going to play this trailer while you talk about it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, I get you now. I see what you're doing. I was saying, move it up, move it up. But yeah, this is written by Emily Gira from VG247. As the trailer plays through on screen, because uh, it's like three minutes long, but it is yeah. incredible. It's an trailer. amazing trailer. Um, amazing trailer. Star Wars fans looking through the, uh, the game will recognize a lot of scenes that have been recreated anyway. But anyway, so new content is coming to Star Wars Battlefront 2. Developer DICE has unveiled the latest trailer for Star Wars Battlefront 2 in celebration of the theatrical release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker this week. The new trailer show cross, uh, showcases crossover content set to hit the multiplayer shooter on December 17th, which is today! So, uh, obviously this article was written yesterday. She says, tomorrow's update brings with it uh, a new and as of yet unnamed jungle planet from the upcoming film, which will be backdrop to modes in both multiplayer, PvP, and story-centric co-op. Additionally, new outfits inspired by Ray Finn and Kylo Ren will be available along with new in-game reinforcement units, including Jet Trooper and Sith Trooper classes. The Rise of Skywalker content update is free uh, to anyone with a copy of the base game. Ooh didn't realise that no we got told something different yesterday it was like Mr. Pay, Jack. To, pay to upgrade by 19, yes. uh, for 19 interesting ok we'll have to confirm this because uh, I did see there was a 1999 thingy on PSN store as well so the Rise of Skywalker content update is free to anyone with a copy of the base game on PC, PS4, Xbox One it's counterpart Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker hits theatres on December 19th so I call a little bit of bullshit there we'll have to uh, double check that but yes if you have uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, that's sick. That it's so sick, sick in it. Yeah. They've managed, they, that must, I don't know if it is mocap or they've just managed to lift it from the movies. I reckon. Because the, the face scans and everything are just so on point. Um, I, uh, some of it, I believe, I know like John Boyega uh, was involved in, in capturing for Star Wars Battlefront 2. I remember the campaign on that because he played an absolute blinder. He wasn't involved in Star Wars Battlefront and it was shit. Uh, in the essence that if you've just watched uh, uh, what was The Force Awakens, really, really good film, massive hype around Star Wars The Force Awakens, and Star Wars Battlefront comes out at the same time. Uh, you're all wanting to do the story, you all want to play through mm. it, you want to use the characters that you've just seen, and it was all, there was none of that really, not enough of a tie in, and no single player campaign. Uh, John Boyega tweeted something about, well done, EA, uh, it's a good game, but why can't I play as me? <laughs> Um, so EA were like, oh, well, maybe we can sort that for the next game. So mm -hmm. they got him involved for, for Battlefront 2 and really good. I mean, the game was a letdown, the marketing campaign. And... <laughs> Let me turn, turn this camera on. <laughs> <laughs> we have, a, we have a, a rather troubled individual. Oh, my gosh. We have a rather troubled individual in the ice cream team. Uh... Bear with me one second. <laughs> 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 we want to never a dull day, is it? No, we we have a uh, we have a, a door to a meeting room just there, and uh, Lee from the ice cream uh, management team, believe it or not, decides to troll us through the window every day, and I won't explain what's going on, but it's interesting. Mm. Anyway, um, so John Boyega was involved in in like all of the the marketing leading up to Battlefront Two. I believe he was at the the EA event. Or he was, or was it? Or maybe he was just involved in capturing some content for the event, and it was released mm -hmm. last year ahead of uh, episode eight. Um, so the fact that they've not got about from three in time for um, episode nine. Yeah. Um, oh, was it last year? Was it, was it year before? I can't remember. Too many years. Anyway, uh, the fact that they've got the update and it's all included in there is 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 really good. Uh, the way they've done that is good. Uh, but 
my issue was the game being just a bit crap. Mm. Uh, however, I'm told by uh, a number of people, uh, Lee mentioned it yesterday, saying that he'd looked into it, and there's been a lot of balancing, so the yeah. game actually plays really well now. So no, that, that's cool, because obviously we've seen games like, I've mentioned it quite a few times, it's like No Man's Sky, like one year later, two years later, but it's been the game that it was touted to be when it originally is supposed to have came out. So the fact that they've, it's a live service game and they've kept to that promise of switching it tweaking it and making it a game that people want to play again is perfect and they couldn't i don't think they would have risked putting this kind of tie-in into the game if it was as shit as it was when it first came out uh the think they just played the cards with the fortnite stuff and hope that that made them enough money but they're using the battlefront and the rise of the skywalker movie tie-in to be able to try and get more out the door and that trailer is one of the best trailers i've seen this year yeah that that is <clears throat> that's phenomenal. love of the products like, that in it absolutely the, the worst thing for me about that trailer is the fact that it's for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, however, that's also the best thing about it. The worst thing for me is I instantly look at that trailer with, like, a huge Star Wars fan, loved Star Wars Battlefront. I like a first-person shooter or a third-person shooter multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. have all on board for that all day. Um, but watching that trailer at first, I'm sat there not wanting to like it because I felt so aggrieved by how much I yeah. disliked Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now... 24 hours later and I've had, it's had some time to sink in and I've, I've taken like those moments that you see within that trailer on board and watched it kind of half a second time I was reading through that and now I'm thinking do you know what it probably needed to be as good as that to mm -hmm. get me back into it After, I mean I'm not even touching on the loot box fiasco because that was irrelevant to me I, w I didn't even get to the point where I had to play for 20 hours to get enough uh, bits of gears or whatever it's called to open the crates or whatever it, it was kind of a lost on me the game mm -hmm. just wasn't enough uh but the general consensus that I've seen so far is that it is now, so that's good. That's so good. Do you, is this going to give you, is this going to entice you to reinstall it back onto your hard mm. drive again yeah, over Christmas? Yeah, I, I even mentioned it to Daniel last night. I said, I'm, I'm going to give it a go because mm -hmm. I mentioned that the trailer was out yesterday. One thing I'm trying to do, though, is where, whilst talking is I want to see uh, if we can confirm the cost for the Star Wars Celebration Edition of it. Yes. If, if any of you guys watching as well, let's bring you in closer. If, uh, if, you've, got, if, you've, got this in, if you've got this on your account, was it digital or disc that you had it? Uh, disc. Oh, disc. Okay, disc, yeah, disc. that's why it's because if you had it in digital, it'll show you the upgrade price, wouldn't it? Because we got told yesterday that it was going to be about twenty pounds if you had the base game to upgrade to this season pass type. I'll just read through this article written by Newsweek uh, uh, from Andrew Whalen says uh, title says Star Wars Battlefront Two Celebration Edition includes Rise of Skywalker map and Sith troopers. It did have some on the cost, which is the reason why I'm looking at this. Uh, uh, just want to make sure that we're giving you the information as we get it. Uh, so, Star Wars Battlefront 2 Celebration Edition will be available for download on PC, Xbox One, and PS4 beginning Thursday, December 5th. For anyone completely new to Battlefront 2, the comprehensive package will cost $39.99, uh, while existing Battlefront players can upgrade for $24.99. Yeah, which is about 22 quid, 20 quid. Uh, so, this article that we've read originally. I don't think it's as accurate as we're... Yeah, so that's that was 5 o'clock last night. Mm -hmm. I imagine Emily's uh, just seen the content, written it there from the little information she's had. Whereas this one um, was written 11.13am Eastern Time, which was... Okay. I have no idea how he's written this on the 4th of December. <laughs> Good effort. Mm. Yes, nice one. Um but yeah, uh, I imagine this one's more likely to be the case because that's what I saw yesterday. I clicked through to PS Store when we were talking to Jack, and it, I think it was nineteen ninety nine on yeah. PlayStation Store. Uh, um, I'm just having a look on the website now. I know this is absolutely a sublime content for you for all you live. So we've got to we've got to confirm things. It's Christmas. Absolutely. People people want to buy stuff. Uh, yeah. Buy now uh, on PS Four. Surely it'll give you the uh, celebration edition. Buy for PS4. No, there's no update. Oh, celebration edition upgrade. And then click on buy for PS4 there, and it should open you a new window on store.playstation.com, which is what I did yesterday. Yeah, 19.99. Yeah. Okay. So 19.99 confirmed is the cost to upgrade Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is which is fine. If uh, that that is a little bit negative for me, the fact that I bought the deluxe edition Stormtrooper, you might still get it. You uh, might still get it. We will see. We will see. But there you go. Nineteen ninety nine. Huge trailer. New maps. Uh, 
since then, apparently there's been a lot of rebalancing as well. Uh, so like I say, the fact that people were running around with sniper rifles. I was literally doing the same thing to compete. Uh, I like using a sniper rifle. Uh, but the fact that... Um, that I had to run around with with a huge blaster cannon, whatever it was called, just to to one shot people on the run. That's not what I want. I want to sit there and go <laughs> like stormtrooper stuff. I don't I don't want to do that stuff. Uh, so yeah, the fact that a lot of that has been fixed should hopefully be good. So I'm going to jump in and try that yeah, at some point. Definitely. Break, hopefully, hopefully it works. What happened? Did you see a moon? Oh, it was a foot. It was more like a total eclipse. It all went dark. <laughs> uh, thanks for the. What is that one? That's it looks like a robot head. A dreidel. A dreidel, a spinning top thing. So there you go. For those of you who don't know what that is, Ha Ha Holidays, or whatever it's called, Ha Ha Holidays. Uh, something like that. The name is roughly that. Every time that you uh, drop bits or subscribe uh, within a Twitch channel, you dish out gifts for other people. So Daniel Day just unlocked the Ha Ha Dreidel for only human jelly. Enjoy the dreidel. Enjoy the dreidel. I got, I got given one the other day. Let's see if I can find it. it I, was... I got a branch, like a right arm. Oh no, Ha Ha Hide and Ha Ha 2020. They're the ones that I've got. So I've got an arm. In fact, I can post them in here, can I? Uh, uh, uh. So they're the three that I've got. I've got that Ha Ha Think. Uh, I say I. Someone gifted to ice cream. I can't scroll it up and down. There we go. Uh, chat's dodged there. But anyway, so there we go. Star Wars. Lots of Star Wars content this Christmas. Uh, Star Wars event is in Fortnite at the moment. Is it just for the next week or so? Uh, did they say it was? So that will run for the next week or so. So you can go get your lightsaber wrong in there. And if you want to get then take it a little bit more serious in the Star Wars world, Star Wars Battlefront 2 Celebration Edition is out today. Mm -hmm. So you can get the full game for a quid-ish, uh, upgrade of 20 quid, uh, and go from there. Uh, so let's jump in to our next bit of news. I'm just closing the tabs. Uh, and we will jump into something different from Star Wars for the change. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Player Unknown. Di, di, oh, wait, not Ding. Not Ding. No. Not Ding. Player Unknown's prologue is not a shooter, but the team is aiming for a bigger scale than Ding, 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 PUBG. Yeah. There we go. We got this in there. So prologue is not a sequel to PUBG, and it won't be a shooter. So Prologue is the new experimental project headed up by Brendan Player Unknown Green. The game was unveiled last week at the Game Awards with a very short, very cryptic teaser. That's because not even its makers know what it's going to turn into yet. Green, however, positively told Forbes that this isn't PUBG 2, and you shouldn't expect it to even be a shooter. We set up the studio and founded it with the goal of experimenting with new technology, Green said. When now we're taking that first step towards building new technologies, and Prologue is the first step into the new world for us. I wanted a chance to deliver something new on a global scale. Uh, alongside him will be the 25-person strong team PUBG Corp uh, established earlier this year in Amsterdam. Uh... Oh yeah, uh, alongside him will be the 25-person strong team PUBG Corp established earlier this year in Amsterdam. Uh, the team is currently working on figuring out uh, the sort of tech that they're going to need for the new game. Although Green wasn't keen on revealing more about the nature of Prologue, he did say that it will have a big scale and be a challenging experience that requires constant improvement from the player. Oof. Which is basically what Battle Royale is. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, a, a steep learning curve that, um, that kind of gives you an idea that it's going to be an 80 plus hour game for you to even get to a half decent level the, like, the, the, to learn the mechanics of the game the thing for me which actually I mean, I'll finish reading it so we can come back to look at the video again there. so one of my dreams is to create worlds at scale Green revealed hundreds of kilometres by hundreds of kilometres with thousands of people and these are hugely difficult problems to solve although the project is very early in development Green wants the new game uh, to also create the type of experience that lives on with players. I've got some pretty big dreams about what I want to achieve uh, that I'm not quite ready to achieve. It will require some new tech, he said. With a lot of other creators, they've been put in a box. I've been t told to go and create, and we'll support you. It's so much responsibility. Uh, I really don't want to mess this up, but these opportunities don't come along very often. You don't get a chance to launch a global IP every day. So if you go back to that mm -hmm. video and then um, restart the video there, see what I get from this. And I could be wrong, because there's nothing to confirm it. Look, look at this. Looking straight forward. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a vibe to this, and I think you'll know where I'm going to be going with this. Well, this is stationary camera. Uh, oh, now look at that, head movement. Uh, 
Uh, uh, so my impression is this is VR. I could be wrong, but but that's fixed stationary camera. I don't know whether that's just uh, um, part. There's a, a different reason for the uh, direction of it, but this, the, the video's on for four, five, so probably around ten seconds ish. Whatever. Mm. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven seconds in of a thirty-second video, the camera is stationary, like fixed. And I, for me, I read that as okay. This is building the world this is setting the scene this is the environment you're getting an idea of it but not telling you anything then after that it kind of like goes boom as in like rough head tracking the first time i watched it i was like is this horror is this frantic kind of like i'm being mm. chased or whatever but then when i watched it back i was like do you know what look it, just the way it's moving obviously everything's first person you're not seeing anything else i was like is that a vr I mean, it could could be completely left of the mark kind of thing you're right of the mark whatever the phrase is so yeah, I'm not sure. What's what's your vibe then? I'm getting uh, an always on survival Daisy. I'm getting that Daisy vibe from this. As in, I, I feel like it's going to be an online live service survival horror game. Just imagine how horrible it would be playing an always on survival horror game like Daisy. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the foliage and environments in Daisy and stuff are hugely dense anyway. But imagine how hard it would be to see someone in that. That like wind, you've got trees moving around, you've mm. got rain, and and uh, that's what that's what Daisy should be by now. Absolutely. I bought that game back in 2012, I think, when I first installed that game, and I played the shit out of it. Any moment that I was able to get online, I was playing Daisy, and it progressively got worse. I don't know if it's because I started to add too much or what, but that game got worse and worse. When the zombies are faster than you and they can walk through walls. You can hit you once and you die, or you fall off a curb and your leg can break. Then I'm out, kind of thing. It doesn't give you a chance. There's no, there's no way of being able to survive. It's a survival game, but you can't survive. Um, but if they can, if they've seen that, I thought, do you know what? We can do better than that because that's they've had the chance. They've had, they've had all the money. Uh, they've had many, many years to be able to do this. Even when I played it at Gamescom, they brought out a new patch or whatever it was. I managed to play it for about 15 to 20 minutes and. I haven't reinstalled it. Yeah, and it didn't give me that bug back again. It's, it's funny that, play it. that Daisy, a game that you've had forever. Uh, good morning, Lazar. Hashtag playing is believing. Yeah. Morning ads oh, as well. Oh, I love. Oh, I love. Oh, missed ads. All of the uh, emote drops. So good morning ads. Good morning. Um, yeah, the, the thing is, like Daisy, a game that you've had for seven, nearly eight years, uh, and you, the brand new patch comes along to it. It shows you how far off the boil that that game is if you played that and didn't reinstall it but you played Ring of Elysium and, and went and streamed that on Ice Cream Uploads yep. the week after kind Definitely. of thing yeah. so I need sure. to reinstall Ring of Elysium again because I think my PC didn't have enough RAM to be able to run it as well as it probably should have done my graphics card's more than capable of running it and so is my CPU but I did only have 8 gigabytes of RAM so I couldn't stream and play at the same time I had to be one of the other <laughs> but, but now we should be able to play the game no problem it's alright I mean when I stream people don't usually realise I'm playing anything else. oh this is Death Simulator <laughs> Sorry, I'm on your uh, I've, won, I've won two games on stream actually but yeah if they've can, if they seen what Daisy has offered to people knowing full well that the player base is just dwindling and they thought do you know what we can do better than that I have every confidence that uh, the player unknown team will be able to give us a decent experience. The thing is, as well, like the um, the the text there. I don't. They actually link through to the Forbes article. Uh, they do link through to the Forbes article. I read the Forbes article last week after the game awards, um, and I don't know if I can quickly get to it. I'm not going to try to spend too long. Now, but it, they're basically talking about the quality of the team mm -hmm. that they've got. So they've got a 25 man team. They started uh, recruiting in, in February. Uh, to create PUBG, it's like PUBG Creative Concepts or something, or whatever the name of the team is, something uh, that implies they're doing something away from PUBG, but owned by PUBG Corporation. Um, um, and his team that he had, it, it was saying like they've got like, it's not just developers or mm -hmm. whatever, they've got some person with like a master's in aerospace engineering yeah. or whatever. Maybe that's not right, but I, I couldn't find exactly what they were, but they've got analysts and engineers and different ways of thinking uh which which when you start to throw that stuff together that's when you start to get creative outside the box because developers um obviously these hugely different developers and developers create loads of different things but developers in the same same environment the same business same same working space are, are conditioned to think in the same way yeah. that's why someone coming in you always go oh, it's nice to see you get some new ideas a fresh set of eyes and things um but getting 
Brendan Green, who's not a developer by trade, he's a, a an Irish bloke that decided to create a modern server yeah. and half taught himself on it, but went in with creative process. He's now leading up a team of engineers, aerophysicists, or fucking mm. NASA astronauts, whatever they were. I don't know what they were. Uh, but that like mix that's the kind of like the creative pressure cooker that you start to get stuff that's 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 different and uh uh it's it's once i mean and all i'm doing is making stupid uh predictions but that looked the irish to me but at the same time it also looks i, I was getting kind of PT-ish vibes, mm. like almost Kojima level Super of direction. Super atmospheric. Yeah. You're in the middle of a forest, there's thunder and lightning happening, you can see the wind blowing, it's starting to piss it down. And and that the fact that that's a 30 second trailer, 10 seconds of it is a fixed cam, 3 to 5 seconds, whatever mm-hmm. it will be at the end, will be the prologue name slate. So, so 10 seconds-ish of fixed cam, 10 seconds-ish of panic movement and gone. That's it. Nothing else. There is nothing that you can... So, I, I'm now going. It's 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 PT slash yeah. Death Stranding slash VR slash whatever. It could be oh, it could just be oh. Actually, this is just a weather engine for the new PUBG. <laughs> Ta-da! We're showing off our brand new element system. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but it, even so, that, that I like the way that the trailer's gone with it. It's it's left us with a lot more questions, which is exactly what they want. They want people to be, they want the likes of Forbes picking up the article and running with it and saying what do they think it is. They want the clicks. They want people to be giving the speculation. Very interested to see what the second trailer looks like when it comes out. I just want to see what kind of direction the game's going in. I'm not going to judge it saying, oh, it's a first-person shooter, or it's a survival game and you're in the forest kind of thing. I'm not going to judge it off that. I just want to see more from it. I want to see what kind of things that they're going to be running with. I like... I'd, see, for me, even without any of the where they're going for it, what I really like is to see is is how... Um, how blunt it is... In, in terms of creativity, it hits straight to the point. It's like, I'm not telling you anything. I'm Absolutely. showing you this, and that's mm-hmm. all you're getting. Uh, and the reason I drew the similarities of PT is because PT came out, and that was blunt in the fact that, okay, this is a, a, a teaser. This is a, a gameplay teaser. It's a, it's more uh, a functional teaser showing you how games can work. And at the end of it, he went, Silent Hill. Uh, mm-hmm. You didn't get that. You got the PT, and it was blunt. And so that could be doing the same sort of thing. Like, in theory, that's a... <gasps> Shit, yeah. I'm in a forest, I've got to get out, and then boom, Norman Reedus pops up, and it's like, Silent Hills, oh my god! I mean, it isn't, it isn't, uh, mm. well, it could be, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think we've not had anything that's done marketing in video games for that long, for a while. I mean, mm-hmm. we probably would have had it if Project Resistance hadn't have been leaked and spoiled. Yeah. Uh, Resi got the closest with their, uh, but at the moment, obviously... It's only the first teaser, so there's a lot of time for this to be leaked out right now. Definitely. But, yeah. Well, this is the kind of thing sometimes, like, we talked about the PT unveil and stuff like that. I wasn't using Twitter back then. I didn't have my Facebook account active, so I was literally pretty much off the grid when it came to stuff like this. Um, so when PT came out, I didn't hear anything about um, Norman Reedus being in it. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know it was a Silent Hill game. It was just... There's a new survival horror game on the marketplace. Okay, I'll go and download that and see what it's about, and then find that. Like, <gasps> having that moment because no one, there was no one there to spoil it. But now, obviously, the the way that social media is now. Oh my God! There's a Resident Evil leak. We're going to show everyone this, and then when the announcement finally happens, we still had that beautiful moment of the thought outside the box. We're going to put Project Resistance up, but we'll bundle in the Resident Evil Three trailer. So you still had the kind of mouth open to the to the. To what what'll be up? Can you put this as a thumbnail? Yeah. <laughs> It's like Home Alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's just it's just things like that. It, it, I hate using social media sometimes for things like this, especially when it's something that you're looking forward to and it kind of gets spoiled, especially if you don't know that it's going to be happening and they've queued it in for a certain time. So yeah, again, I'm going well off track, but I, I'm very much looking forward to what this second trailer is going to give. And if he decides to give any more information on it, which it doesn't look like he's going to be doing anytime soon, nah. he wants to keep his cards close to his chest, then he, he's only going to tell you what it is when he's ready, rather than being bullied into what it It'd is. be interesting to see when it when it does happen, because you start looking at the timeline then, is, okay, when are they going to announce mm-hmm. it? Are they going to own it? Like... Uh, the big boys do so like a take two a rock star they'll go okay we're, we're putting a GTA trailer out yeah. on Christmas day why just because we want to and yeah. we don't give a fuck it will do whatever we the fuck it were uh, whereas PUBG Corporation's alternative projects division or whatever the fuck the name of it is that there's 25 members of staff there they've not made a game mm-hmm. before obviously PUBG Corp has uh, but can they control the dialogue uh, my instant reaction is no. So then I go, okay. So when does the game come out then? If they can't, if they don't control the dialogue, they need 
a platform in which they can deliver their announcements. And when, I mean... Do you think they're going to... It doesn't look like the PUBG engine there, does it? No. It looks like they've made something completely different. And I think he said that towards the bottom of the article as well, saying that he's, he wants to get used to using something. Uh, with a lot of other creators, they've been put into a box. I've been told to go and create and we'll support you. So it's so much responsibility. I don't want to mess this up. These opportunities don't come every day. So it looks like he's just gone, okay, so this is my idea. This is how I want to do it. This is what I want it to look like. I want these elements to be in, make it look as good as possible. His devs are going, okay, no worries, but I want to see what engine they're going to be using. I imagine they're not going to use it, uh, the same engine, because PUBG was made in Unreal Engine. Mm -hmm. Unreal Engine is owned by Fortnite uh, creators Epic. And there was all that like issue of PUBG Corp saying, well, Epic have used our engine and lifted all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff out of our ideas wise to put into theirs and then did the same with the season mm -hmm. pass, battle pass shit. So I imagine they're going to go, do you know what? Um, let's just distance ourselves from that and use whatever. Um, but I think Unreal uh, is a uh, obviously phenomenal engine uh, with what you can do with it. But I think they'll probably, the idea of the division as well, was it, I'm, it's either called advanced projects or special projects i think it is special projects pubg special projects i don't know whatever uh, uh i'm pretty sure it was fox engine for pt really i'm pretty sure but we, we just because it was unreal, oh, it's unreal. there you go mm -hmm. uh, uh i'd say it, it looks that looks that looked great running through the corridors but i was thinking if they wanted to make uh an atmospheric game like that for me, at the moment, I've said it a million times, there's no better engine than the Resident Evil engine at the moment. The, the, the thing is, though, is like you've got, like you look at what Horizon Zero Dawn did, and you look at the landscapes in Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes, fair enough, they don't have that level of weather detailing. But then you look at Death Stranding, which had much more uh, in terms of weather detailing mm -hmm. and landscapes. Uh, so Gorilla's engine, uh, yeah. if, effectively, could be something that they could use. Um, don't know whether they would or not. I mean, I have no idea. It's all, it's all just like guesswork at this point in time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I want I, something with the dark. I want something dark because it looks like it's going to be a dark game. It looks like it's going to be atmospheric, and I don't want them to use an engine that when the colours are bright, they're bright. Like Horizon Zero Dawn was quite a bright game, wasn't it? It was very colourful. It was very pretty. What will that look like when you change everything to night and you tone them colours down? See the, the the amount of shading and detailing and stuff. I I believe that that will work really well that engine mm -hmm. um that said it, i'm not i'm not a developer i have no idea yeah. so i mean you could use a ford cortina engine for a while <laughs> <to> be fair. <laughs> well, whatever made. but yeah it's uh, the, but these these are good discussions to have when it comes to the, things like this you want to be able to say oh what are they going to be using are they going to be using this engine this engine what what the development team like have they worked on anything like this before what are they known for have they got that kind of creative uh, mentality to be able to create something dark and airy um have they got any ideas uh, that they've taken from other games that they've enjoyed playing before that they can try and spin the stuff. These are all good questions. I'll tell you an idea that they don't want to take from another game when it comes to engine is Kojima's tour of the studios to try out the engines. Whilst that was all obviously a PR marketing stunt, it just it was horrible for me, particularly now seeing the I'm just an indie developer yeah. stuff. It's like you're just an indie developer, but how many indie developers? Imagine... Uh, uh, B and G connections were developing old star soccer for the mobile devices. We're not going to get a tour of Guerrilla Studios and have a, a front of house shot like mm -hmm. in front of all the staff or whatever, like Kojima did at Guerrilla and he did. Well, he went to Unreal and he went to Dice as well. Yeah. Try Frostbite and all the rest. I mean, he went everywhere. Uh, so <laughs> it's been there. It's been done. It kind of devalued it for me. It was like it was almost a look at all of the engines that are amazing and I'm going to pick the one that's the best for my game and mm. he never said that this is better than the others he was, he was clearly careful in the way he's done that but that's irrelevant You, that's all marketing and fair enough he did well he, he sold uh, best directed game of the year mm. or whatever uh, off the back of that um, hands on direction stuff but yeah, keep all of that out of it keep it just mm -hmm. focused on the game rather than the uh, stuff behind the scenes and then that's good for me but anyway, let's move move forward slightly. Uh, we won't bring this up on screen. Uh, I just wanted to get my ding, ding, ding moments in. Uh, there's no point bringing this up because we did cover this uh, a couple of weeks back. Um, uh, so update 5.3 in PUBG uh, is coming to consoles tomorrow. PST Central Europe. Oh, 6, 6 a.m. on the 19th. Uh, it will be in Central European time. Um, so, yes, 
PUBG uh, 5.3 update is coming to consoles. We spoke about that a couple of weeks back. So if you want to find out all those details, either Google them yourself. Yeah. We will have them uh, in, linked in the show notes as well. But we also discussed it uh, last week on... Uh, what was it the week before? Go back to the shows, you'll see. So yeah. Watch them all, it'll be a treat. Uh, but... Um, the only things that have been added to console that wasn't there in the other um, PC updates is kill cams. Finally, in, you can now see death cams in P, uh, PS4 and Xbox versions of the game. Could obviously. you not see them? No, they've never been in. Uh, oh, right. I think it was more like a caching. Um, obviously, if you die, the game needs to cache like your last 30 seconds or yeah. whatever to put it on. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. And caching has been part of the reason why the game stalls or glitches or crashes or whatever. So within the actual thing, one of the other things they mentioned is that they've removed other cache data so there you go performance cache data will be deleted when moving to lobby after the match is finished to reduce the rate of game crash so i think the quality of life improvements they actually start off by using that which is a uh, phrase that i'm all on board for for pubg uh da, 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 da. yeah we got uh, as season five starts to wrap, wrap up we're ending the year with a number of quality of life updates to give you a better pubg experience including the highly requested death cam feature so there you go pubg Perfect. nice big things uh cool 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 cool, cool, cool. noise toy uh, now on to last story of the day a guy that Bibby has a little bit of passion for on, I do I love this guy so Mr. Streamer of the Year Shroud I, we didn't oh Shroud you mean actual not, not yeah, should we be came, we came second yeah. to Shroud yeah okay. unfortunate I, I scream Streamer of the Year by the way <laughs> We're, so, t- we're talking about us, it's fine. In this, Go on, Bib, just shout the article. In this very, read the article now, Bib, I'm going to stop talking. Very VG24-7 <laughs> heavy day. Uh, they just write good shit. They, they, they are, VG24-7 are, are one of the best, particularly in the UK, at giving you well-rounded and well-in-depth mm-hmm. uh, news. Although, Emily Gear, she, she kind of made us do our own work and get the prices, but we'll let you off today, <laughs> Emily Gear. it's fine. Well, what was it, with the best article of the year of uh, the things that should the things that should have won or Kirk, bad... Kirk McKean. Yeah, yeah. It, what a, one article that was. Anyway, uh, Shroud lost two-thirds of his Twitch US viewership in the move to Mixer. Absolutely no surprise there. Uh, Sharif Saeed... Thanks for sticking with us on Twitch, by the way. Hi, welcome. Yes. Uh, oh, there's the wrong camera. Fuck! <laughs> That's a massive yikes. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, according to a new report, Shroud's move to Mixer lost him a significant number of views in the US. Uh, Stream Metrics has reported a few interesting statistics about the size of Shroud's audience before and after leaving Twitch for Mixer. Shroud became a full-time Mixer streamer in late October, but only 15% of his Twitch audience in the US followed into Mixer in November. On Twitch, Shroud enjoyed a staggering 718,000 viewers per month, a figure that now dropped to around 231,000. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in November on Mixer. Uh, the size of Shroud's audience on Twitch, in fact, was over 1.6 times larger than Mixer's entire US viewership in October. Damn. <laughs> so it's easy to see why Microsoft decided to make that deal. It's not all bad news, though, because the report reveals that 47% of Shroud's Mixer US viewers in November followed him to Twitch, which means that 53% uh, are completely new to Mixer. Also, damn. <laughs> In that sense, Shroud helping bring many new viewers to Mixer, which also works out in Microsoft's favour. Of course, it remains to be seen if Shroud will reach or even exceed his earlier records on Mixer. Uh, so, I'm one of the people that never really followed him over to Mixer because I completely forget that it exists. Yeah. Well, as soon as I boot on my PC at home and I want to watch something, I click instantly over to Twitch. If I don't see anyone online that I want to watch, I'll go to YouTube and I'll end up... Well, that's where I find... To, that's where I actually watch most of my Shroud just stuff need now. To just think about... Where where would I watch my content creators like stream their video games? Uh, I don't know, but I wish you had some merch that we could buy fifty percent off. Oh, yeah, I imagine imagine if you could buy it on Amazon and you could get it delivered free using Prime. And speaking of which, if you have Prime, <laughs> do you know that you can link your Prime account on Amazon to your Twitch account and get Amazon Twitch Prime, which means you can subscribe to the channel and you get stuff for free. And not only that, the moment it's Ha Ha Holiday, so if you subscribe now. You can give someone else a free emote in the chat as well. So just saying. Anyway, well, anyway, anyway. That, that's something that we can do that Shroud can't do. So that's great. That works in our favour. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's. I'm definitely one of the people that never followed him over to Mixer, um, which is a shame, really, because I absolutely adored watching him. When him and Doc streamed, absolutely amazing. But I find most of my Shroud viewing now is on his YouTube videos, which that he posts like once a day. Oh, I was, I was in it, highlight yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like it's basically like half an hour of him playing Tark off a day. So I just <laughs> I managed to digest that either on my dinner or when I get home. Um, but yeah, it's 
it's I don't think it's surprising. It's working for Mixer. Fair enough, it isn't might not be working for Shroud as much, obviously because he's lost a lot of his viewership. But he's getting people over to Mixer. I'm assuming the, the deal that he struck was, I know I'm going to lose people, therefore you have to pay me the difference. Imagine though, Shroud say signs a 24 month contract. He's already two to three months in that. It was October, so all of, uh, late October, so all of November. Uh, and into December. Okay, it's only two months into it. Mm. Then we're at mid to late uh, December now. Um, so, but he's still two months in. That's a sixth of a year mm -hmm. now. Uh, so he's uh, like flying through that contract. Imagine if he gets to two years and he's gone. Okay, well, I'm going to take my forty million, twenty mm. million, whatever they've given him, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna go back to Twitch now. Imagine Twitch's coup when they can go. Okay, we know that what you had on. On Twitch in one month is 1.6 times everything <laughs> that Mixer has. And bear in mind, Ninja is on Mixer. Mm -hmm. Get all of Ninja's views and then everyone else on Mixer. Put them together, put it on Twitch. The month before, you got 1.6 times. Imagine Shroud then goes back to Twitch. Imagine how many big. It's not going to be 1.6 there, it's going to be like 6.1 yeah. times. I, yeah. I've, I've got a really bad feeling for Mixer unless I start to do something soon because fair enough, he's got a lot of new people coming over to Mixer purely to watch him, same way that Ninja did and the same way that a couple of the other big Twitch stars that went over to Mixer did however they've been paid handsomely the difference between uh, what they was getting on Twitch as a daily viewers that could potentially donate a certain amount of money because they, they, before they moved over they would have been calculating how many donors they get a day and how much monthly income that they're getting oh, yeah, just yeah. from streaming they need to have done that due, dil due diligence and like they, they'd be looking at growth curves yeah. or drop offs and, and Shroud could be going okay in 24 months I'm going to be getting probably 6 million pounds mm -hmm. if my uh, advertising stuff carries on it's probably going to be another 3 whatever yeah. million if I move to Mixer I'm going to lose all of that my advertising stuff potentially could drop off so I'm mm -hmm. earning 3 million this year from ads i could be on five million projection next year so yeah. so they'll obviously offset all of that stuff good morning lads says definitely nate good morning good so morning. You're, you have all that to to play the part of so obviously they've paid out their ass to be able to get him and the rest of the crew uh the old twitch crew over there what happens when they eventually leave because i don't think they're going to stick around fair enough they're not doing it they're not streaming now because it's a, it is a job to them now so they're he's been paid he doesn't matter how many times he streams now he's been paid it if fair enough, he might get more people coming on and donating to him to top up his wage, wage, shall we say. Um, but the, I think in some cases they're streaming now just because they're streamers. That, they enjoy playing games, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. So when they eventually move back over to Twitch again, what's Mixer going to do? Are, 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 do they think they're going to have covered their costs and invested well to know that when they eventually go back to Twitch, which I think they are going to do. Um, well, all Mixer can do is, it's, all it's, like, it's like getting... Uh, Hazard moves from Real Madrid, mm -hmm. comes to United, realises, actually, supposed to be really good, they're a bit shit at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, two years later, he goes, you know what, I only signed a two-year deal. Uh, Madrid is saying, I can come back and I get mm -hmm. big money. United are going, oh, yeah, but we kind of really need you to stay here. So he's going to go, okay, well, I was on 20 million before, I need 60 million this mm -hmm. time. And you get that that Wayne Rooney sort of situation. Yeah. Like, like, give, me, give me all the money. So, so you start to get that, I believe. I think, I think the biggest thing for Mixer... Uh, which makes me think the Mixer Project... Don't get me wrong, I say Mixer Project. That's probably undermining to anyone Mixer. It is a really good platform. The stuff that they're doing from a development perspective is they're so fast and so quick. Mm -hmm. and, and the issues that Twitch has is Twitch is built on justin.tv, million-year-old mm -hmm. code that's now got Amazon stuff in it trying to fix it. But they're building on... Um, old foundations whereas Mixer has Microsoft and they've built with future proofing and console and everything in mind you could say old but solid foundations because yeah. it's a well established but like it, th those old but solid whilst it is solid it's like having a Ford Escort mm -hmm. that kind of thing you know it's going to work you know it's going to be fine mm -hmm. yeah you have to crank your windows down but they're not going to get stopped because they're not going to freeze over the electrics yeah. or whatever it's like that sort of what happened then it's I've something. no idea did you, see, did you see my screen then yeah it was like yeah, I have no idea. Uh, so, so yeah, the um, uh, it might be it might be old and solid, but it also doesn't have the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. uh, and like when you go to mix, so there's some stuff in there that 
annoys the tits out of me. Like you get that way things yeah. like squids or whatever going up and up and down it, or a whale or something. And it's like it probably means stuff to that community. But for me, as someone that likes the interactive community element that having a Twitch stream gives you, but I'm sat there thinking, I'm watching the chat, thinking, what the fuck is going on? And I've missed Shroud doing his his eight man killing, punching yeah. as he lands kind of thing. Uh, it, got, it comes back to the argument that we had yesterday, where everyone would rather have all of their stuff in one place, which for me, convenience and being a lazy bastard and completely forgetting that Mixer even exists. <laughs> and again, that is not undermining Mixer whatsoever. You've gone on, you've said really good things about it. I potentially don't have that because I don't go on it. Do you know what I mean? I've got I've no idea. I've got a profile on there, but I never use yeah, it. Yeah, I've I, I've got one because I've got an Xbox account, and I yeah. kind of just had one because I created one. It was there, and I was watching. I mean, there is good stuff, and they do have thoughts in terms of how they can mm -hmm. how they can offer good experience for viewers as well as streamers. One of the things I mentioned in the past was the hype zone. So they have something called the PUBG hype zone, uh, and bear in, go back to when PUBG just hit Microsoft, exclusive to Microsoft. Uh, um, well, consoles. It was just obviously massive on PC. It was still at the point where it was like hugely contesting Fortnite for views, hits co uh, uh, consoles, and people want to play it. People want to uh, uh, watch it. A lot of people want to watch it, particularly mm -hmm. because in those early days, when you're a bit shit at it and you don't know how it works, you need to watch other people sing. And the hype zone essentially looks at everyone streaming on Mixer. Uh, and because it's obviously made by Microsoft, tied into in-game data, and, and it can feed from the servers, it knows yeah. exactly who is the closest to finishing a game in terms of time, mm -hmm. in terms of number of people left alive. So then um, it goes, okay, Bibby's only got eight people left in his game. So the hype zone takes all 17,000 people watching that channel, and they drop in, like a, a quick raid on Ice Cream Uploads as Bibby's got eight people left. Bibby goes all the way through to a chicken dinner. Everyone on his channel sees Bibby's banters, his mm. sexy Christmas jumper, uh, his gameplay skills, and they go, yeah, yeah, follow, 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 boom, yeah. boom, 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 that's, And that's... Then, then your game finishes, it gives you about 10 seconds, and then it goes and goes, oh, Graham's got six people left, let's jump into that game. Oh, Graham dies instantly, fuck. So then it leaves my channel and goes to uh, Luke, who's got 17 people left, but uh, so then they all sit there until Luke dies or wins, and it, and it keeps jumping around which that's amazing for, for viewers you've got constant action you don't have that mid-game slowdown uh you've just got chicken dinner chicken dinner chicken dinner dead or whatever you either get the win or the loss you get the l or the w you, you see the defining moment and then you move on but from someone like a twitch streamer you've got seventeen thousand people mm -hmm. that want that, that you never you've not had more than 12 viewers on your on your own mixer channel you've now got seventeen thousand people there which is huge so mixer is, is good it is good however you get shroud to move over mute you get shroud uh, to mute uh, to move over and you still like like we said that fact uh, Sh shroud's audience on twitch was of 1.6 times larger than mixer's entire us viewership in october so mental so so yes okay it's gonna take time it's gonna take time but now we, we can see that in a little bit of hindsight and this is just finger in the wind maths i yeah. don't i don't have any stats or anything but a month later it was like when Ninja moved. I remember like Doc tweeting like a lol when it was like Ninja's moved to uh, Twitch, uh, no, from Twitch to Mixer, hasn't done anything. Twitch is still growing faster. Yeah. And Doc was like, <laughs> <laughs> in typical Doc fashion. Uh, so, so like, I, f I feel like it's kind of the same. Yes, Mixer got Shroud. Yes, Mixer got um, Ewok or whatever yeah. it was called that followed. And yes, Mixer got a few others. Mixer are going to get more and more because Mixer can do that. But then still, uh, Twitch remains still nobody's going oh well do you know what, actually yeah. Twitch is the, the narrative around Twitch hasn't changed the only narrative that changed was last week uh, Twitch just kind of went okay fuck it we've had enough now Tim the Tapman you're staying Lupo yeah mm -hmm. yeah, man. and just dropping big names and now people are going okay if Timmy Tenders is staying then yeah I think <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe that's it that they're actually paying them to stay now so they're in a completely different scenario than there was before they were just expecting people to maybe stay because they've got the they've done the work they've done the graft on there to get to where they are now the oh, no. front page the, the, all the time the top, the top echelon did do have uh, bespoke contracts uh, on Twitch so like so like Tim the Tatman will have a better percent and he will have oh yeah but no it, no it, I don't think that normal people would have known that people who just tune in because there's no there was no press around these people being uh, their deals shall we say the, all you know is that Ninja has been bought by uh, by Mixer Shroud has been bought by Mixer what, what's the plans for the other guys that are on Twitch and I, I think yeah that, like you say that that education that comes with that by Twitch going okay well we're not, we're not going to say that we've got a bespoke contract with the doc because mm -hmm. that that suddenly elite 
uh, elitism. Yeah, it adds elitism to Twitch. Uh, so it's like, okay, well, why am I even going to bother when Doc's got preferential treatment, preferential yeah. rates, he gets paid for streaming uh, before he even streams, never mind the subs or the donations or whatever because of his brand and, and so on. And now he's getting better rates. Mm. Twitch can't really do that out and out. They can't go, okay, if you get really good, we'll give you shitloads of yeah. money. I mean, it's kind of... Anyone with a bit of forward thinking in it would say, okay, so if I'm one of the biggest... Uh, performers on a platform the platform's going to look after me well duh yeah, it's, <laughs> so, again we use the football mentality the thing is though in sports obviously people want to buy they, they want their team to buy the best players and we're team Twitch we're Twitch partners we're the guys so, so Twitch bought the best players absolutely I mean. and then you've got Mixer who got their team now they're the Manchester City of 2008 who've just come in with all the money and they're trying to buy the best players and build a team around it so they've got the two or three marquee signings now but Twitch are going do you know what yeah but Twitch are we'll going just keep... we've got baby <laughs> we've got but baby then, no, they're now thinking actually we've we've got prime Yaya Toure let's give him a new contract we've got uh I don't know Sergio Aguero just signing through we're going to keep hold of him on our team now the, the, everyone loves to see their team make big signings and these are their big signings they want them to do well they want to they want to know that Team Twitch is going to carry on being the best and we are the best yeah <laughs> we are right. the best god damn right <laughs> Mixer ain't going to come shit to this guys god yeah, damn uh, right but yeah it's uh, I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen this time next year because this this is going to be a long drawn out war um are Twitch going to continue to no, uh, to sign these players, uh, sign these players, fucking hell, sign these streamers and keep them tied down, or a mix are just going to keep on throwing money around until eventually? I reckon it starts to happen. I think I think I can't see Mixer stopping. Mixer, they've they've signalled their intent. Mm -hmm. They've they've thrown at Ninja. They've thrown at Shroud. Some of the biggest names out there. They can't now throw at uh, Timmy Tenders. Doc's already said he's not going to go. Mm -hmm. So if he goes now, I think. That's almost like Delph in terms of the snakey. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. not leaving Villa Two days through. Later, through. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's like that. That will end him, and I don't think he wants to. Mm. He's like he's doing all this TV stuff, and Twitch have been accommodating for that. I reckon he's probably got some sort of contract stuff in the bag. So if you have got Lupo, uh, uh, Timmy Tenders, and who was the other one? Uh, Timmy Tapman, Doctor Lupo, and well, there was three of them that all announced on the same day last week. Um, and then you have like. Mixer is in that group kind of mm. thing. They all they all play together. Um, but now Mixer's posse aren't going with him. That's kind of like that's almost like the lead man going. Like when you see a film and and it's like like the coach is being treated like shit by everyone and someone goes, "I'm with you." And yeah. Then, and then everyone else goes, "I'm with you." Ninja's gone. I'm with you. Mm. Shroud's gone. I'm with you because <laughs> uh, that's what Charles sounds like by the way uh, and then Timmy Tender's gone yeah actually we like to see me so yeah. in a bit boys Absolutely. <laughs> so I mean not not that they are failing by doing that they've definitely taken the step that's right for them mm. but but from Mixer's perspective no, everyone else hasn't stood up so they have to now I think and time is of the essence from Mixer's perspective mm -hmm. Like they're gonna have to spend, but Twitch are now going. Okay, we see what you're doing, and we know that YouTube's on the on the game now as well. D Live, yeah. well, they got PewDiePie, so did. Has he gone now? Is he not? Excellent? Well, he it, it posted yesterday that he's gonna be taking a break from any content and creating for a year. Is apparently already deactivated his Twitter. Hmm. Uh, so as of next week, he isn't gonna be posting for a year on anything. He's just literally taking a complete year's break. How long that lasts, I will know. I will. Uh, nobody knows. Um, the D Live stuff, whether or not that's still active, or it was this time last year that he signed a contract. The interesting no thing about him signing with D Live as well is they signed him to be uh, his streams were exclusive to D Live. Mm -hmm. Nowhere did it say there was minimum requirements in that in terms of you must stream two hours a, a week yeah. or whatever. It was like when you stream, it has to be on D Live. Okay, fine. I will. I will exclusively sign over my exclusive streaming rights for you forever for exclusivity for for a good year. Nice, nice. Can I have ten bajillion pounds? Yes, there's ten bajillion pounds. Never streaming though. Am I? <laughs> yeah. So you Actually, can have all of the nothing that I do. Um, so yeah, but Mixer they need to keep up with it in terms of Twitch. Now we're going. Okay, we've got them three. We're, Doc is probably locked down. We're gonna reach out to uh, who else is big? That's what the. The TSM guys that Doc streams with, TSM, obviously huge esports organisation. as well. So not just like PUBG, but the League of Legends teams and whatever. Twitch have Summit. partnered with... Um, yeah, they got Summit. That, what, or was it Summit that, that locked down last week? I think it may, maybe... 
I'm gonna Google it. Okay. Twitch. Uh, Tim, the Tapman, Doctor Lou, for contracts. Lyric. So Lyric. lyric that's it, yeah. He's probably the biggest at the moment on Twitch. Uh, so you think you think Shroud and the Doc. You then jump to kind of like Tim, the Tapman, Lyric, and Summit. So if they lock in Summit as well. Uh, then you start thinking, okay, all of the the old guard, the big names that have been there forever, the, like the, mm -hmm. the ever presence, they're now starting to be locked in. Where do, where do Mixer go from here? Uh, so yeah, if Twitch rolls on, pulls in all of their big names, uh, gets them all locked into new contracts, then it's kind of like, okay, your move, mm -hmm. your only move so far hasn't been groundbreaking new ways to engage with content. I mean, yes, the hype zone is good. Yes, the whales in the chat ads functions and stuff like that nothing particularly new apart from taking what i've got yeah we stop you taking what we've got what are you going to do mm -hmm. what's your next move and mixer are probably on a bit of a timer there people will give them the uh the benefit of the doubt but when the novelty wears off when it's like say hey, i've got to watch shroud on mixer i want to watch shroud play with the doc and ninja mm -hmm. on pubg 2 middle of 20 2021 20, or whatever um, but I can't squad stream and watch the two of them. I've got to watch <laughs> the Doc on one and fucking Tim the Tap on there and yeah. Ninja and Shroud over there. And, and it's just like, you'll get to the point where people go, ah, oh, you can't be arsed, fix it. Just put them all in one place. Yeah. So, yeah, Mixer need to move fast. Uh, it's if, going to be an interesting year. Uh, I mean, what Mixer really need to do is get their Amazon on a, a merch store going up here. Bra, bra, By the way, this isn't sponsored. This is us just literally saying it's fifty percent off. What you playing at? <laughs> uh, they literally, there's, there's, there is the Amazon merch. Uh, Amazon store has a Twitch. No, Amazon has a Twitch merch store. There we go. Got it eventually. Uh, and yeah, if you're a Prime user, there's fifty percent off until the twenty second December. We don't get any sponsorship nope. stuff from that. Absolutely we're just saying because because we are Twitch partners, so yeah. we'll do it. Yeah. What the sale you're on today? Five quid, I think it cost. Bam, bam. T-shirt, three pound fifty. Bam. Anyway, but that is it. Star Wars yourselves happy this weekend, this fortnight, all Star Wars. The Star Wars, funnily enough, is all Star Wars. And this PUBG, well, it has no Star Wars, but it does have Death Cam, so you can check that out. And you feel free to check it all out on Twitch, because that's the only streaming platform where anyone gets any views. I think we've just kind of uh, established that. So very make... quickly before I round up, Pirate just said PewDiePie has already deactivated his Twitter. Uh, he did say that he was taking a hiatus in 2020, but not sure if it was for the whole year. I reckon he'll be back um, yeah. for a couple of reasons. Um, the least likely one, but probably from our perspective as mere mortals, uh, the least likely one is the fact that he will lose out on a lot of money. In in media creation, relevancy is everything. Mm -hmm. You take time off and you lose your relevancy, your, your value drops. I think that could be a part of it. But what I genuinely think will be is... Uh, I've met PewDiePie. Felix is a very intelligent man, very switched on, really nice, and uh, from the very short time I spent uh, with him, I could see that he likes to be active and creative. Mm -hmm. And when you go from being an active content creator, uh, the most influential single person in the entire world uh, from the age of, what was it, like 18 when he started mm -hmm. making videos? Um, Probably just wants an old day. Yeah, exactly. You, but that's it, though. After you're old day and you sat there at home going... So, uh, which country shall we buy today? Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, he's got no, if he's got no social media, if he goes out anywhere, people aren't going to be tagging him in shit because they can't, they can't tag him. They can't say, "Oh, look, PewDiePie's a at PewDiePie or whatever." So he's probably just taking a come. His his brain's going to be taking it. He's not going to be opening Twitter four times a day, or he's not going to be opening Facebook whatever. The, the thing is, though, there'll be a, there's got to be an itch. Oh yeah, definitely. He's scratching because if you think like he's filming videos, he's not editing them. I, I highly doubt he's editing. He's got well, actually, I highly doubt. I'm fairly sure that I had a conversation with him on that. He has a team of editors. Uh, he employs like 13 people or mm. whatever. I mean, all those are out of a job if he's not making content anyway. That's probably going to weigh on him anyway. Um, unless they're only freelancers, then he's probably gone. Okay, well, I'm not making videos. Yeah, much. sort yourselves out. Um, but uh, he. He records videos, he has his videos edited. I don't doubt he has some involvement in the editing process. He makes his social media tweets, he's planning out his content and everything for the rest. Uh, he's signing uh, uh, contracts with DLive and whatever. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a man that's finger on the pulse. So whenever we've seen someone that, that's that's dropped off uh, from something done before, Casey and I start one video a day, every day. Mm -hmm. um, that's it, I'm done with making videos. Was the was what he said? He said, "I said I will make videos. I'm done with making videos every day." 
but he still pretty much made videos yeah. every day. All he did was give himself a little bit of flexibility with it, but but you're in, you're into a, a format. Um, Definitely. PewDiePie was saying he was burnt out from creating content nonstop for all these years and just needs a break. Yeah, you can't I, I get him, it. Can you? I get it. I reckon I, I reckon he does need it. It's it is hard work as a content creator. Um, I mean, we've never had it as as rapid as he had, but but doing social media content creation as well, the stuff on the scoop and whatever, and, and working for brands, multiple brands, it does get quite tiring when it's always there. Uh, never to the scale that he's had it every year, mm -hmm. experienced it. So no doubt he does need a break. But I can't every see video for him has to bang. It has to be better than the last one. Oh, that, see, I, I think it's probably got to the point where it's not even. It's probably that is the issue is the fact that he's lost that because he's when you got to what's he on now like. 75 million or whatever somewhere around there he's over 50 million I know that was but but everything just bangs for him because there is that many people and obviously Minecraft resurgence will have helped him because he, he can just okay yeah. I can just play a bit of Minecraft to bang but it must get to that point where it's like I'm not even trying and I'm succeeding mm -hmm. that'd be like playing through a Master League on beginner or what, amateur or whatever <laughs> yeah. and yeah, just every shot goes in yeah it's like 16-0 I can't yeah. be arsed I'm, 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 I've won the league and everything six times in a row with with Huddersfield Town mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah, that was a reference to a, a, a Graham Norton thing that keeps going around on Facebook uh, there's a the, the current Doctor Who uh, she's from Huddersfield and she was in an interview with The Rock and Kevin Hart on, on Graham Norton uh, and they were showing like a uh, the subtitles from when she was on an American talk show and, and she's like I'm from Huddersfield in West Yorkshire but because she speaks in a Huddersfield accent it's the, the guy doing the uh, like uh, uh, close captions yeah it's like I'm from Huddersfield <laughs> H-O-O-D-E-Z field I'm from Huddersfield in West Yorkshire so yeah anyway anyway that's it that's it that's it that's it that's it ladies and gentlemen we are done for today thank you very much for joining us for this episode of The Scoop. So on the third of the week, we have two more to come for you guys. Obviously, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. And then Friday morning, hungover, because it's our Christmas due from Jelly Media slash Ice Cream Team on Thursday night. So make sure you come back. If you haven't already, there's a button. Point to it, babe. Go on. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it's in that way. Somewhere up here. Uh, there's a follow button. There's also a subscribe button. Feel free to click that one too. You don't have to. I mean, right there. if you do have a Prime, get there. make sure you use it. Do it, do it, do it. You don't want to lose your Twitch Prime because you get one free every month. And it's Christmas. If you, don't have to, if you don't have Twitch Prime at Christmas, then you're missing out. Always get your free trial at Christmas because all the presents, you know. Anyway, anyway, you know it. I know it. We know it. Anyway, so we will be back. Um, obviously, 10 a.m. tomorrow. Josie should be in, although I did see some stuff popping up. Is she definitely in? Uh, I think so. Oh, is that what this is? Uh, okay, she she is just a little late, so Josie yeah. is in. Uh, you know, it's it's cold, it's winter, it's mm -hmm. frosty and snowmanning. And Minus stuff. two this morning when I left the house. My car was completely frozen over. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I had I had the claw minute helping me de-ice the car this morning. So <laughs> that's what children are for. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yes, Josie will be back playing more Death Stranding on the channel. She will be a little bit late because because weather, uh, but she will be here. If you hit the follow button now, you will get notified when she goes live. You will get notified at 10 a.m. when we are back. Obviously, you know who we are. I'm Graham Day. This man is the Biberino. Anything you want to add before we disappear, babe? As always, guys, if you do see anything knocking around social media, if you're reading any articles that you think you want to hear our opinion on, feel free to tag us at Graham underscore Day and at We've Got With Beanio. You can see them at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> We're doing all the work for you. And also the Ice Cream Uploads uh, social media channels. We will then add it to the, very, the news stories the very next day. So feel free to tune in and you can hear our opinions on them. Yeah. Well, have yourselves a lovely day. Tune in for Death Stranding. And if not before, we will see you back here 10 a.m. ish tomorrow morning. Uh, oh, I'm not here. I'll be at home. You'll be here. Anyway, have a lovely day. Stay for us, day.